And it was only in the past five years when all this evidence would emerge. And I'd be like, well, that doesn't, that's not true. It doesn't seem true to me. Like, I don't know what the truth is, but I can tell when someone's lying. It's my one gift. And I would see these people lying and I'd be like, why are they lying? Like, I know they're lying, but why? And so I really came to this, like at the age of 50, like, that's very late. It's like I never for a second thought you have UFOs. What changed your attitude at 50? The evidence. Which is what? Well, we, we, well, oh my gosh. Or the Pentagon was required by the last defense authorization bill to like produce some of their files on UFOs. And it turns out they have known about this since the end of the Second World War, which ended in 1945. Been a huge increase during that war, during the war as well. Huge increase in UFO sightings, in UFO crashes. And it turns out the federal government has been tracking this for 80 years and lying about it. So why? Well, that's a great question. I can't answer it theories, but I don't know. But here's what I learned. The first question is, is this real? Or am I just being a crazy person who's spending too much time on the internet? Well, this summer, we got a call. We didn't reach out. This person called us. Lexi, who's standing right there, who's a genius, one of our producers, gets this call from this guy who's a tenured Stanford medical school professor. And he wants to come on the show. Now, this guy has a couple patents, and so he's rich. And he's got tenure at one of the most prestigious schools in the world. So, like, He's not a flake. He comes on and he's like, 11 years ago, the US government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, on brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries. As a physician, they had all these court cases from families of US servicemen, over 100, who'd been killed by UFOs. The Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And he's like, so they're in the courts. And I was like, there are over 100 servicemen killed by UFOs? Like, what? He's like, yeah. And there are court cases about it. I'm like, why isn't this on the front page of the New York Times? I don't know. But he goes, I'm involved in it. I'm the, you know, I'm one of the researchers. I'm the expert witness in these cases. Holy shit. What does that mean? And he's like, for example, UFOs appear to be tra attracted for whatever reason to nuclear energy. So at nuclear missile bases in the upper Midwest, for example, nuclear powered aircraft carriers, nuclear powered submarines are all getting buzzed by these objects, including underwater. And in a number of cases, these things have landed on military bases, including famously in Germany, in West Germany in the 70s, and servicemen have approached them. Like, what is this thing? There's this like giant glowing thing on the base. And they approach and they get traumatic brain injury. Like they are rendered, like, yeah, yeah. they get brain damage or they're killed. And he studied their brains and they have, this is all totally real. This is not, this is the Department of Defense, dude. And they've all had this damage from some kind of powerful energy that we cannot identify. So then this guy's like, wow, he's just a scientist. He never believed in UFOs. He's like, this is real. I cannot believe this is real. This is like crazy. He should do research on it. He's still at Stanford. And it turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed and the US government has the wreckage and it's being held by defense contractors, Raytheon, Lockheed, which are big independent companies, but that work for the US government. They're really part of the Department of Defense, but they're separate. So you can't, their sunshine laws don't apply to them. You can't actually get information from them. It's a very tricky way to hide information. And they have the wreckage from these crafts. Hmm. And I'm like, really? Are we positive these aren't like advanced Russian or Chinese? No, of course not. Is it more like the government or whatever is just this good at hiding it or people just don't care? Well, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's too big for people to metabolize. Like if Prince Harry says something stupid, everyone's like, I can't believe Prince Harry. Because, like, that's manageable. You can, like, oh, this douchey fake prince with his stupid wife from Santa Monica. Like, I get that. But the idea that we're not alone in the universe and we're getting buzzed by these objects whose behavior defies physics, like, that just explodes too many categories in my head. I just can't deal with it. And I think that's part of it. But I'll tell you this, the most interesting from my perspective, it's, I don't know if it's a consensus, but a lot of people, serious people, not crazy people who study this stuff, US government employees seem to believe that these objects are coming from under the oceans. So the conventional view is they're coming in from outer space. There's not actually a lot of, you know, something enters the atmosphere, we can see it yeah, on satellite, yeah. and there's not any evidence of that actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's happening, but we don't know that it is. There's a lot of evidence these things are coming out of the ocean, including video too, of these objects coming out of the water at high speed, or even more amazing, descending at Mach 3 into the water. And then of course we have a huge submarine what fleet. The fuck? What the fuck? Then we have a huge submarine fleet, American, but also Chinese and Russian, underwater with pretty sensitive measurement devices, sonar, etc. And they have recorded these objects doing hundreds of knots underwater. So like, let's just stop there. Wait, what's knots? Uh, it's 1.1 miles per hour. It's oh. a way that we measure objects in the water. Oh. It's 1.1 miles. It's a little more than 
mile, mile per hour. And a, and a mile is a measurement that we use in the United States. Right. It's distinct from a kilometer, which I think is right. Yeah. common in Canada. But anyway, <laughs> these things are moving at impossibly high speeds. So just like, let's just apply common sense for one second. If I take a 45 ACP, you know, a, a 45 caliber handgun and fire it at you underwater in, say, a swimming pool 50 feet away, you can catch the bullet because the resistance is so strong from the water that objects can't move that fast underwater. We know that, but they are, and they're moving without any visible means of propulsion. So no wake, no bubbles. Where, where have we like tracked that? All over speed. the world. 